Hi, welcome to Healing Powers TV. I wanted to welcome you and our guest speaker today, Krista Sokash. Uh, Krista does a lot of different things. Uh, she does energy work and healing. She's a licensed minister and also uh, does uh, ghost communication and spirit communication. So that's what I think we're going to primarily talk about. So I just wanted to say thank you. I'm excited to have you as a guest on our show. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add in terms of uh, what you do or your background? Basically, like, you covered it very well. So <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, well, I guess let's just launch right into this. Um, I think ghosts and spirits are something that people are really curious about, um, and some people have had experiences. And I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about what ghosts and spirits are, what are the differences? Uh -huh. um, you'll notice nowadays especially, I mean, we've always heard of ghosts and spirits and, and these things, and it seems more and more people are evolving their abilities to sense these energies, to mm -hmm. sense these things. But to break it down technically, like from a, mm -hmm. from a clairvoyance point of view, right. is a spirit, if you will, when we pass on or leave our bodies or, you know, it's, we're done with this time, um, basically we leave in the consciousness that we had on earth. So you have a spirit which is an emanation of you know, energy mm -hmm. and it has a certain consciousness to it. Okay. <clears throat> a ghost, however, if you've ever had the experience of being in a dream mm -hmm. and you might be going through something in a dream and you're not aware that you're in a dream, is kind of the consciousness of a ghost a mindset. Okay. So what happens technically is that a person that has passed over and are trying to cross over, as, as we're so familiar with that, that term, um, basically they're in what's called the astral body. Mm -hmm. And that's why some bodies are very strong, some are very weak, sometimes you see pieces of it. So again, in your dream experience, if you've ever had uh, a dream where like my legs won't work, or mm -hmm. you, you can't open your eyes in your dream, or you, you feel physically limited, that's your astral body. And, Sometimes it, it needs more energy. It needs a healing just like our physical bodies. Okay. So a ghost, from my experience, I, you know, trying to communicate and understand that side from a personal experience, where a person, oftentimes it's because there's unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the ghost work that I've done in the past is with homes that, you know, people were born in these homes, we got married in these homes, birthed their babies, and died in those homes. So there's a lot of energy. And sometimes they can't leave for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And so they're stuck. But you might get an image of they don't cross over all the way. They're in their astral body. So they're in a dream space, sort of, as we would experience it. Mm -hmm. So they don't recognize, oh, this is a totally different time, or it's, I'm, I'm in a different situation. It's much like our dreams, and if we had someone come up to us in our dreams and say, you need to go home, you, you need to go to the light, <laughs> right. you'd be like, oh. So a lot of people that I've talked to um, after being in a coma, it's a similar kind of thing where if you are with someone in a coma and you tell them, communicate to them, you know, you're in a coma, you need to come back, they usually will start that journey of, oh, I didn't realize I'm in no time and no space. That's, They're doing work. Yeah. So a ghost is more, I would say, a consciousness that's kind of stuck or tied to the physical much more. A spirit is more um, like when they, they capture orbs on, mm -hmm. in the photography or in film. You'll notice um, sometimes there are circles with, with like color patterns yes, in them. Yes, yes. Those are different bands of consciousness. Not, none being better or worse than another. But a spirit, you'll, you might capture the energy of it, not so much that astral body. So when you have apparitions, when people mm -hmm. can see a physical form, that's usually an incredibly dense state for that soul, but they're, they're, on, they're in that dream space. They're trying to resolve. They're going after things. So when you try to communicate using the popular digital recorders with EVPs. Yes. Can um, you just briefly, because I'm yeah. not sure if everyone knows what EVP is, can you explain... What? Yes, it's, a, it's an electrical voice phenomenon. So okay, on the you. digital recorders nowadays, and video recorders, mm -hmm. and some even old tape recorders, the microphone is so sensitive to bandwidths we're not really hearing. You mm -hmm. know? And so it'll pick up um, sometimes residual sound, I guess. I'm not sure the exact scientific uh, labels for these, but, right. but sometimes you can hear things that get recorded that you didn't hear with your physical ears. Right. And so you might notice sometimes that they talk about you'll get an intelligent response.
but sometimes you'll also get something that's not of this time. They, they refer to, you know, they're looking for someone that's long gone or they're trying to find a room that doesn't exist anymore. Right. So it's very much like if you were to be in a dream. That is so fascinating because I've done a little bit of research on ghosts, but I've never thought about it in that way that they're in a dream, essentially kind of like a dream state. Uh -huh. And that really, for me, affects how I think about them and, you know, any interactions that I might have with them. Um, one of the other things that I think is really fascinating um, about ghosts is that a lot of people think, oh, that there's one way you can sense a ghost. And what I've learned is that there's so many different ways. So electronic voice phenomenon. Um, but can you talk a little bit about a, the different ways that uh, ghosts and spirits might communicate with people? Absolutely. Or that you might sense that. Absolutely. Like it's, it's fun to look at this because if you look at with humans mm -hmm. in our bodies, there's people that sometimes we're scared of them. Right. We're uncomfortable around them. Other people were drawn to. Mm -hmm. So if you can put that in that realm of spirit where there's, you might encounter people that come off as very abrasive and it scares you. So you think, oh, you're bad, but that's not true. Right. Others are very sweet and, you know, kind, just like people. So when we're trying to sense them, sometimes you might just have a feeling. You, you feel mm -hmm. there's something in the room. So if you practice really, you know, calming your state and sensing then you can you can feel it in a way. Other people will hear things like do you, do you hear that those ta the people talking or do you did you hear? You know, I thought I heard a sentence or something. Other people will literally see them physically. Their eyes will physically see a swoosh or a color mm -hmm. or what was that in the corner? You know, mm -hmm. what just moved. Um, other people, you just know something's there. Right. So there's many, many ways. And there's, if I may share a story with you on, sure, on, yes, on this, um, to explain this point. Um, a long time ago I heard this story, to, so it's not mine, but it explains that there was a, uh, I think it was in the Midwest, and this family moved into a brand new housing development. No graveyards, nothing spooky, it just mm -hmm. was, you know, land that had been sitting there as a farm. So they built a bunch of houses, and the mother, she had two young children. I think mm -hmm. three and one. And then the husband would go on these business trips. Mm -hmm. So when they moved in the house the first couple months, you know, little things were moved and, and things weren't in their place correctly. And, and Okay. So then about three months in, she'd hear footsteps at night. And this is what some refer to as paranormal activity. You know, mm -hmm. when there's nobody okay. physically there, but all this is happening. Right. So she started getting a little scared, but, you know, was, what, what can you do? So... It started escalating to the point where she was being woken up, like she'd feel the bed move, she'd feel, you know, it, it got much, much stronger. It escalated to the point one time where they were in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, a knife was thrown at her. Now, wow. from our perspective, mm -hmm. oh my, you know, you'd be afraid and, and okay. So she said the first thing she did in call, is call her psychic. <laughs> <laughs> so the psychic comes over. And says, I don't know why, I just had this feeling we got to call the gas company right now. We just have to call the gas company. They called oh. an emergency number, and the gas guy came out, and he went downstairs to the, the furnace and, you know, the pilot light and all that. He came up in a brutal sweat. He's like, lady, had you waited about another hour, this whole thing would have been blown up. It was been leaking gas. Wow. Now, if you're not, you know, it's, it's hard enough in the physical bodies to see each other. <laughs> you know, like someone, oh, I didn't even notice they were here. But can you imagine trying to communicate to somebody, how do I get your attention to let you know you need to get out of this house? Right. When they're not listening, they're afraid of you, they're running from you, <laughs> every signal you're giving. So that's not 100% you know, percent of the, the communication we get all the time, but oftentimes it's misunderstood. Right. Oh, so, I, that's a great story because I think so often our first reaction is just fear or, or, or because you know we don't understand. Um, but that there is sometimes a message trying to be communicated either for us or sometimes they are looking for assistance for something. Uh -huh. uh, and that's not always something that we can do. I mean, sometimes I think, let's, for ghosts specifically, they need to move on, but they're stuck in whatever happened in their life. Um, but what do you recommend for a situation where someone feels like there's this, um, a ghost in their space and maybe is not trying to help them? But, you know, they're struggling with, how do I handle this? Because uh -huh. I think that's a situation a lot of people have been in. 
Yeah, there's many ways actually. I was working, uh, again, I'll, t I'll share a story with you of this little boy, mm -hmm. about nine years old, and his mom called and said, you know, he has been seeing things since he was really little. Mm -hmm. And he kept seeing things though, but, but it was escalating again to the point where he was being kind of tortured by this real dark spirit, he'd say. Yeah. And so what I told him to do is, is the first thing you can do is say hello. You know, coming from a space of, if not like in the horror movies, hello, <laughs> right. but more, more in the, okay, I'm going to make a conscious effort here to contact. And you, you say hello and, and see what response you get. Um, many people of many faiths have different ways of casting something out. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can basically explain, you don't belong here anymore, you need to go home. Some spirits won't hear that. Mm -hmm. So I told this little boy, I said, call in Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, this is not a religious being. This, right. is, this is kind of a guardian that Archangel Michael is infamous for cutting fear, protection. Mm -hmm. So I told him to get a picture above his bed every night. Just call in that energy. It's a very cobalt blue energy. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't had an episode since. Wow. So you, you can, some people, you know, they, they immediately think, oh, if I, I have to pray, which is fine. Um, but one of the ways is, is much like uh, an intruder, whether they're in the body or not. They don't belong there. Right. So you can explain it and say you, you need to uh, be released, you need to go home, you don't belong here. If you have problems communicating, you can always call a clairvoyant or, mm -hmm. or someone to come in and see if they can get a more neutral perspective. Right. Yeah, I think those are some very good tips. Um, and one thing to share with um, any watchers out there is that you know, as people in physical bodies, we have seniority over the space. Yes, ma'am. You know, so we do absolutely have the authority to say, you know, this is my space and not yours. Um, that said, I think sometimes it's important to listen to the messages that, you know, the spirits or ghosts might be trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. But we absolutely have the authority. Absolutely. Um, in terms of how you, let's say if you were called to a space and someone was struggling with um, an apparition, how would you clear it or what techniques do you use personally? Depending on the amount of activity, mm -hmm. um, I usually go in and do a, a clairvoyant reading on it, see if I can get a little more neutral so I'm not feeling anything because mm -hmm. it, it helps, it'll make me mesh with what I'm feeling oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking clairvoyantly, like an observer. Right. And identifying, okay, this is different here, this is a different color, sometimes it's images, sometimes it's, it's different um, levels of information coming to me. And with some, it's, it's as simple as acknowledging them, of how's mm -hmm. homeowner to old homeowner, right. that they're going to take care of your place. And then they, they move along. Other people, there is an official you know, we need to call in some guides and have you escorted out of here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, just resetting the space. It, it's much like if, if the ghost has the interior set a certain energy, much like we would move into a home and we don't care for the style they left it. Right. <laughs> and then you might start changing it and that spirit's not aware of, oh, I don't live here anymore. So you'll notice sometimes in remodeling and construction this happens where there's interfering owners. <laughs> So it, it's claiming the space for yourself, and, and there's always help. Some people use, you know, um, they feel good with a priest coming in and blessing the home, mm -hmm. or if you want to bless the home, meaning that you're claiming it and, and you're, you're giving whoever was here space to move on, but right. this is my space now. Okay. Great, so there's a lot of different ways that you can clear this. Every right situation there. I found is different. You, you can't walk in going, oh, I know everything about, okay, here we go, another house. <laughs> Because it's always different, so right. it's it's those are some of the methods I've used. But even now, when I do new ones, okay, I, I have to be open to let's try something new. <laughs> Very interesting. 